Yo, yo, it's your boy 4-0, bringing you a Ableton Live tutorial, uh, rocking out programming the impulse in uh, Ableton Live 8 today. Uh, this is the first of many uh, tutorials that will be released on 40tv.com, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, yeah, welcome. So, uh, let's start out. I got Ableton Live uh, 8 opened up right now. Uh, first thing we want to do is probably set the tempo. Uh, I'm a dance guy myself, so today's tutorial will be based around dance, but obviously can be uh, used for other genres of music as well. Um, in fact, uh, I'll do a hip-hop tutorial as well uh, down the line. Let's uh, set our tempo to 128. It's a good dance uh, tempo. Over here, uh, the second button on the left um, is where our instruments as well as our audio MIDI effects are located. If you don't see this panel right here, there's a collapse button. That's the first button right here. It actually collapses that menu structure right there. Um, let's go ahead and go into instruments. Let's find impulse and we'll drag impulse into uh, our tr uh, project right here. I'm going to delete the audio and MIDI tracks right here and I'm going to rename this impulse. Uh, to rename you go ahead and press command R. Uh, I think it's control R on a PC. Um, we'll call this a drum kit, right? Uh, so Impulse is a drum machine, a sampler, uh, has lots of different um, parameters. We'll go over those parameters as we go. Um, the first thing we want to do is actually load some sounds, right? So over here in this uh, folder structure, um, yours will be different. This is a um, sound library I have loaded right here. Um, it's an inspiration sound pack. I think a Deep House sound pack. Um, these are all one-shot samples. So under bass drum hits, we'll go ahead and look for a bass drum that we like. You know, I really like number one. So let's go ahead and drag number one into our impulse first uh, sound bank. We can audition the sound by clicking on the play button right here. These buttons to the left and right are mute and solo. Obviously, you wouldn't have both uh, depressed at the same time. Excuse me, got the text going off over here. Um, we can uh, adjust parameters for each of the sounds we load into the impulse here as well. So you notice uh, we can change the starting time of this particular sample. Um, so if we drag this up and we replay this sound, we're missing the beginning of that sound. We turn it up too much. We're losing a lot of that sound, right? Uh, we can transpose the pitch of this sound uh, by semitones um, up and down. You can stretch this sample. Um, this drive is to saturate the sound. Um, frequency and resonation. You can turn this filter on and adjust uh, or filter out certain fre frequencies. You can change what type of, um, and I know the screen is cutting off here a little bit, but you can change what type of filter, low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, etc. We'll go ahead and turn the filter off. You can change how long it takes for the sound to decay. The decay is, uh, by turning this uh, down, it will decay, decay very quickly, and therefore shortening the sound. So if we, we put it here, notice that kick is like almost all the way gone. Press Command Z to undo that uh, change. Um, here we can pan our sound left and right. Obviously, a kick you don't want to pan. Uh, if you highlight a particular parameter and press Delete on your keyboard, it will go ahead and set it back to its um, normal position. Apologize for the bird's sounds outside. I don't know how well it's being picked up by the mic. Over here, uh, we have a volume um, control, and this is per sound right here. Um, adjust the velocity of the note being played, right? Um, this is your envelope information for the whole kit. So any changes made here uh, will affect all the sounds loaded within this particular uh, impulse. So if we adjust the volume, the timing of the sounds, um, or the transposition of their pitch by semitones, uh, let's go ahead and uh, add some kicks to this uh, to a loop, or let's create a loop. If we had a uh, MIDI keyboard, right now I'm, I'm actually just going to draw them in, but if you had a MIDI keyboard, you could play them in. Um, we'll go over that in another tutorial. 
But if we double click here on this first available uh, opening, it will actually create a one bar loop for us. And if we notice down here, um, this is our kick drum. If we click, we notice we don't hear a sound and that's because this particular um, icon is not selected, the headphone icon. If we select it and click, we can now audition the sound. We can draw sounds in one of two ways. We can either double click and place that sound. If we don't want it to be played, obviously we can uncheck the headphones and it will not play it when we double click the notes in. We can also right click somewhere here and it's actually being cut off on the screen but there's a draw mode um, a little ways down. You can select and when you're in draw mode you can go ahead and just click once to add the note. If you want to remove the note you click it again. If we exit out of draw mode go back to uh, uh, non-draw mode <laughs> and we double click and we add a note. If we double click and we add a, um, a sample or sound uh, to a particular note position that we do not want to be there, we can double click to remove it. So right now we've got a 4 or 4 pattern going right with our kick. Yeah, pretty standard, right? Uh, we can turn that sound off by clicking on this uh, little box right here. We'll go back and let's find a snare, right? If we go to our parent folder, we look for snare hits. I look at my notes, see which one I selected when I was designing this tutorial. Um, I think I went with this one. But obviously we can audition different sounds. If you're not hearing the sounds to audition them, there's a headphone icon here as well. I think I went with this one right here. Let's drag it into the second position on the impulse. Um, and if we go back in to draw the notes in for this particular snare, we'll find that the snare is here. If we want to audition it, we'll add this on the second, um, the second beat and the fourth beat um, within this bar. So now if we play this back to hear how it sounds, there we go. One of the things I think the snare is a little bit too hot, let's turn it down a little bit. Um, so obviously this is something that you're going to do by ear. Uh, when I was designing the tutorial, I came up with some numbers um, that worked for me. Some of these numbers uh, work also because we're going to add a compressor and the compressor is going to bring out certain sounds and so forth. And um, Whether you adjust the, the volume of these particular sounds now or when you slap on the compressor um, and adjust from there, um, entirely up to you. We'll do a tutorial on mixing uh, in the future, maybe to outline some of that stuff. Let's go ahead and add a hi-hat. So in the hi-hats, I think I added um, this one down here. There we go. Let's go ahead and add it to position number three. I also added um, another one. Let's see, I think, yeah, I think this one. Um, I'm actually going to add this twice. I'll explain why in a second. So now we've got three different hi-hats. Uh, hi I'm sorry. Yeah, hi-hats. Okay. My brain is working. That's good. So we got this first hi-hat right here. Let's go ahead and go back into the arrangement uh, or the edit view so we can uh, draw these notes in. We can hear this uh, hi-hat right here. Um, I think I drew it in a pattern something like this on the bar one, beat one, uh, no position one, no position three, bar one, beat two, no position one, no position three. So if we play this back, let's hear how it sounds. All right, sounding all right. Uh, again, the, the volume of this particular sounds a little bit high for me. So let's pull it down, I don't know, maybe seven dB. Um, 